Well, hi there, I'm Noah Bradley and this is Handmade House TV. I want to welcome you to this series where we're putting together a little log shed. If you can build a log shed, you can build a log home. You can move forward in building your future home with a great deal of confidence and a, and a little bit of experience in, in going through the process from beginning to end. If you've been following along, you know that we got our little logs up. And one of the keys, one of the insights that I can provide for you, one of the big, probably in the top 10 with regard to building a log home, is that if you get out and you start shopping with the log cabin kits or whatever, uh, they frequently will feature you uh, with, with models that are entirely 100% made out of logs. Uh, but if you get out and you start exploring vintage log homes, you'll find out that probably 90% of them have some kind of addition coming off of them that is not made of log, that is made of either uh, modern framing or stone or timber framing. Uh, and this, uh, this adds a whole lot to our home. It saves us money and it provides us much more of a, a visually interesting home. Uh, and it takes into consideration all of the pros and cons of log construction, of, of all of the different kinds of construction. And you, you got to wonder why is it if it's so many advantages to doing some kind of addition that's made of something other than logs off of log cabins, why is it that the kit suppliers don't offer plans doing that? Why don't they promote that? And its obvious reason is they want to sell as much product as they possibly can. And so whenever I design a log home, whenever I build one, I would think that 95% of them, almost everyone I've ever built, has had some kind of shed off of it in order to expand upon the square footage to provide me more functioning uh, uh, space on it. And admittedly, when I built this little tiny log cabin for the Log Cabin Academy, uh, it, it's, it's really small. It's almost impractically small, uh, but it's as large as I wanted to do knowing that I was working with huge green logs and I was, and I was demonstrating how I could build the entire cabin entirely by myself and lift all of those logs. Just me, just this old guy. So anyway, now that I have a practical purpose for this log, sh a log shed here, I need an addition off of it. I need a, what is known as a shed addition off of it. And what is a shed addition? A shed addition is one with a shed roof on it. And a shed roof is basically a single plane. There's nothing complex about it. It's just a single roof that comes off of it. And I knew uh, the approximate dimensions. Uh, I'm really restricted in here among the trees, uh, as well as by the county officials and property line barriers and you name it. Uh, but I wanted to do this a little addition off of it. And I wanted it to be kind of long. Um, and, uh, and I had a good visualization in my head of what it was gonna look like. And I highly advise whenever you're building your own log home, you need to, you need to really focus on those elevations, on what the outside of your home is going to look like. But frequently, even when you get it perfect on paper, it doesn't look as perfect uh, in real life when it's actually going on. And so you always want to keep an eye on your project as you go along. Is it as visually as attractive as what it possibly can be? Uh, and, uh, and make those changes to improve it, to make it the best it possibly can be. We don't want just a, wow, nice house. We want, we want a, wow, nice house when we, when we finish with the project. So when it came time for me to do this little shed addition off the back of it, I knew basically the size of the structure that I wanted to do off the back, uh, but I didn't know exactly the roof pitch that I wanted to do. And so what I did was I just created this little miniature wall on the back end of the cabin and basically all it is is two posts with a header that spans between the two that can carry the rafters that, that will set upon the top of it. And uh, basically I, I knew that I, I wanted this end of the structure to not be so short uh, that I would bump my head on it. Again, this is a log shed, it's not a log home. Um, and uh, so I knew, uh, I knew approximately how tall I wanted that. And I knew that it, you, there's, you know, there's some kind of orientation you want with a roof, uh, that the steeper you picture your roof, the uh, less prone it is to uh, leakage. Uh, there is a certain level that when you get certain flat, you can't use anything but metal or asphalt shingles. And I would never use asphalt shingles, but uh, you, certain flatness of it that only metal will do. In other words, you can't use slate or cedar shakes on too flat of a roof or the water will set there, it won't rush off fast enough and it will find its way in through the cracks and leak. 
So you want a good you want a good pitch on any roof that you build in order to be able to use your choice of material uh, that you want to use. And so what I did, uh, since my I wasn't trusting my drawings fully, I didn't really go to all that trouble for a shed. Uh, is that I went ahead and built this little mini wall and then I had some long boards that could serve as temporary uh, rafters for visualization purposes and I put the put the rafters up there in in two different locations and one would have been uh, flush with the very peak of the roof uh, coming uh, peak of the log cabin roof down to the log shed um, and and when you did that and you stood back and you walked around and looked at it uh, it was clear to see that the shed roof was overpowering the little log cabin. Uh, that the cabin wasn't looking to be the center of the focus of the home. Uh, that the shed was was starting to monopolize into the aesthetics of that. And you always want uh, you always want the main part of your home to be the most domineering part, which would require me to drop the the, the rafters. And so the next logical place in order to put rafters is basically setting on top of the top plate of your log cabin. That means that your rafters would actually be bearing on the, the structural support of the cabin. Makes for an incredibly strong uh, shed roof and on many structures that's exactly what I've done on uh, say one and a half story houses where the where the log cabin was already plenty tall uh, that you you had a high place to come off of. Uh, it looks very very attractive. Some people will call that a, a cat slide roof where if a cat got up on the house, uh, up on the ridge pole, he would slide all the way out and be in the yard by the time he got done with it because it basically looked like a sliding board. Uh, but here in this particular situation, for whatever reason, when it was sitting down there, it looked too flat and it looked too low. It looked, it looked mobile home low. It didn't look classy log cabin just right. And so I'd like to give full credit to Nick, uh, who gave me a hand here, a uh, member of the Handmade House Guild and a good buddy, uh, who was here with me the day that I was doing these preliminary visuals on the rafters for the shed that uh, came off the back here. And uh, his, his uh, thing was, have a try and somewhere down halfway, about halfway down the roof. And, uh, and sure enough, I put it there and uh, stood back and I think we both quickly agreed that was the spot to do it. And so that's what I've done. I've come about halfway down from the peak of the log cabin roof in order to uh, start my roof of my porch. And then I came down as low as I could without the uh, ability to knock my head. And, but the most important crew is to, is to look back. And does she look good? And I think that she does look good. And of course, I realize it's gonna take a little creative visualization on your part, but trust me, when this thing gets done, it's going to be as cute as a button. And uh, so I'm going to be thrilled with it. And so after I did that, basically I sized up some rafters, uh, the same uh, material I use for the log cabin. And uh, I did some just uh, tracing right here on site and uh, came up with exactly what the rafters I wanted to do, cut out enough of them, spaced them a little less than 16 inches on center. And, uh, and then went ahead and put the uh, roof sheathing just like I did on the log cabin and uh, knocked it out. And so I've got myself, uh, I've increased the square footage of the log cabin. I haven't doubled it, but, but close. Um, and uh, it's making for a whole lot uh, more uh, practical of a structure. Uh, it's just a log shed, but nonetheless, when one arrives, they will notice the logs prominently. Uh, I did not cover over any of the notches. I held the shed way back from the notches. Uh, someone will enter in through the door of the log cabin. They'll get that wonderful feel of a log cabin. Uh, that's, that's all that's expressed to them. This back shed will provide accent, make the cabin more attractive. And perhaps I'm going to put a little window in that shed addition as well. We'll see about that. And uh, anyway, I'm planning on uh, in the log uh, cabin section to be able to hang things on the walls, uh, saws and, and uh, what have you, and uh, attractive things more or less to make it a beautiful shed. And then you will round the corner uh, into the opening into the shed addition. And there I'm planning on putting a lot of shelves in order to put all my tools in there. Anyway, I thank you guys so much for joining me and uh, appreciating uh, walking through the steps of the importance of a, of a shed addition off of your log cabin and the importance of it and what it will bring to you, the cost savings, uh, the functionality of it to it. We go over all of this in the Handmade House Academy available to members of the Handmade House Guild. Oh, by the way, I want to thank five new members of the Handmade House Guild. They are the Hayden Clan including Janice Hayden and all of her wonderful kids. 
It's a wonderful thing about, uh, about being a member of the Handmade House Guild. It's one membership uh, per pan family. Uh, I don't, I don't want, to, I don't want to husband and wife both have to pay, nor the family, nor the kids. Uh, one, one, uh, one application gets you into the guild, and uh, and everybody can enjoy it. And uh, I do my best to make everything kid friendly. I absolutely love kids. I've got my eighth grandchild on the way right now, and uh, the, the greatest thing in the world are our children. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, Luigi, uh, uh, Cecilia, Cecilia, Cecilia. Gosh, I'm sorry, Luigi. Uh, I really appreciate you becoming a member of the Handmade House Guild, and I apologize for botching your name. Uh, Andrew Helms, Mark Patry, or Patry, Oleg Steitsyuk. Wow, what a wonderful name, and I probably massacred that, but Oleg Steitsyuk. What a, that's a tremendous thing. I hope one day to meet you. Thank you very much for your support and signing on with the Handmade House Guild, Oleg. Um, uh, member, uh, uh, you're a member for the life. You get everything that I have ever created in every academy course uh, that I will create. You've got uh, access to all the handmade house uh, plans that are available worth probably 10,000 or more. Uh, plus you're a lifetime member of the forum. I appreciate you for signing up. I think it was a smart choice and that's what everybody says that that has joined in. I haven't heard any negative responses at all yet. And as you're aware that uh, I am closing the door on membership into the Handmade House Guild, it was set up as a founding concept. Uh, it's been in place for several years. Uh, clearly it's not the best business model going forward to offer everybody for a one-time price to get everything I have ever produced plus everything I ever will uh, with no further up sales or up charges. Uh, but uh, the, the time for that limit for that is coming to an end. It's, a, it's just a matter of a few weeks away now. And uh, if you're not a member of the Handmade House Guild and there's any inclination on your part that you might want to be a member of this fine group of wonderful individuals, uh, please consider joining us now before the clock runs out. And, uh, and for everybody else, thank you so much for joining me here on Handmade House TV. I look forward to seeing you next week where we continue our progress in the construction of this log shed. If you can build a little log shed, you can build a log home for yourself. It's a great practice and confidence building process to go through. It is the backbone of the, hand, of the Log Cabin Academy. If you want to learn how to build one, uh, I, I teach you step by step through the whole process of doing that. You can find out more about the Log Cabin Academy at handmadehouses.com. So until next week, you guys take care. We'll see you then. Bye now.